for many functions the antiderivative does not exist. Using Taylor polynomials, we can approximate a lot of them. We will encounter an important example from statistics in this video. We will also look at some special relativity, the famous formula well everyone knows, E equals Amsky c squared. But what does it mean? Well, let's take a look. First the integral from statistics. We want to approximate the integral from 0 to 1, each power of minus x squared dx. Uh, very well known function, and it's the bell shaped the Gaussian um, explicit formula for the antiderivative is not known. But we can compute each power of minus x squared using a Taylor series. Uh, Taylor series of each to the power y equals uh, y to the power n over n factorial, plug again minus x squared equals y. Then we get this expression over here. <coughs> and work it out, we get the uh, n factorial, and on the numerator, minus 1 to the power n times x to the power 2n. So if we want to integrate, we uh, have to integrate the power series uh, instead. And then we find that we uh, have to compute the antiderivative of x to the power 2n. So x to the power 2n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 1. Uh, so we get a 2n plus 1 over here times n factorial, x to the power 2n plus 1, plus some integration constant. And now we want to compute this integral between 0 and 1. So uh, uh, we plug in 0 and 1 in the power series. Well, 0 is easy, of course. x to the power 2n plus 1. If you plug in x equals 0, then it will be 0. x equals 1 is also fine, because you get 1 to the power 2n plus 1, which is just 1. So we are left with only the prefactor over here. So there we are. And now we have a different problem. First, we had to calculate an integral, and now we have to compute an infinite sum. However, what we do is we just take the first few terms of this alternating series. So we get uh, 1 from the n equals 0 term minus 1 over 3 from the n equals 1 term plus 1 over 10 from the n equals 2 term, the n equals 3 term, and the n equals 4 term. Ah, so we just take the first few terms and we add them up and we get an approximation for our integral. And since we have an alternating series, we can uh, compute how big the error is in this case, because that is as most, the error is as most the uh, term we are neglecting first, so that is the n equals 5 term. So the error is of this order over here, which is smaller than uh, 10 minus 3. So now you have some approximations for your integral up to uh, an accuracy of 10 minus 3. So that's how a uh, Taylor series can work really nicely approximate uh, the integral, you know your approximation and you know your error. On to uh, special relativity. From special relativity we know that the uh, mass of an object changes if its velocity changes. We know it's given by the formula over here, m equals m0 times some nasty function. And to get some more information we are going to look how uh, at this nasty function. It contains a v squared over c squared where v is the velocity of your particle and c is the velocity of light. While this uh, speed of light is usually much higher than the speed of your uh, particle, which means that v squared over c squared is usually small, we will call that x, and we get our f of x equals 1 minus x to the power minus 1 half, where x will be small. And now we can make a Taylor series approximation of f of x. Well, if you uh, around 0, if you plug in a equals 0, we get f0 equals 1. And we need f prime, we get minus 1 half, 1 minus x to the power minus 3 over 2 times minus 1, so the chain factor. So here we have our f prime, plugging in x equals 0, we get 1 half. Differentiate once more, we get minus 3 over 2 minus 1 half times 1 minus x to the power minus 5 over 2 times minus 1, so the chain factor, so 3 over 4. We plug in x equals 0 again, and we get f double of 0 equals 3 over 4. So there we have our Taylor approximation, a uh, 1, uh, 1 half times x plus 3 over 4 times x squared divided by 2 factorial, so 3 over 8 times x squared. So what does that mean in physics? Well, that means that our mass will be our m0 times uh, this function over here, where we uh, used v squared over c squared equals x. So there we are. Uh, and what this tells well, we have our famous formula E equals mc squared. And if we apply that here, 
What does that mean? We, uh, when we multiply this expression here over here with c squared, so we get a m0 c squared, so the rest mass times c squared. And the first correction, one half times m0 times v squared. Oh, you, I hope you will recognize that from your classical mechanics. That's just your kinetic energy over here. And its next correction to that is very small, of course. So what you see uh, in the classical world, when v is much smaller than c, you can kick out this term. And uh, the, the energy due to your moving object is uh, just uh, one half m0 times v squared. Uh, uh, so it's just a classical energy. So if you take the limit c over v to uh, v over c very small, you go back from special relativity to your classical mechanics.